Hello, I am Ed Fessler and this is my 2018 Tesla Model 3. Um, I did a 100,000 mile uh, video a while back and I thought I'd just do an update for 125,000 miles and uh, give some updates on battery range maintenance and uh, maybe some more uh, specific information about uh, cost uh, for operating costs and so forth. So, um, so all the information on the 100,000 mile video still applies. It's still got a lot of good information. This is just extra information uh, that I'm adding to it. So you can go check out the other one too uh, if you want that information. Um, so the battery life right now is uh, 285 miles. That's what the range was when I charged it up. Uh, the last time I charged it, 125,000 miles. So that's, that's pretty good, I think. If you do the math, it started at 309 miles of range. Again, the newer models have more. Uh, but that's what mine started out at and if you divide that that's 92 percent of the range of the vehicle so uh, so i think that's doing pretty well um, i also wanted to just go over some some numbers you know being 125,000 miles i, I kind of gave some some uh, information of how many watts per mile and so forth and i figured people could do some math if they wanted to kind of calculate uh, what the expense some of the expenses were on it but i thought maybe i would just spell some of that out um, you know, right now, uh, it's doing about, uh, 225 watts per mile. Um, so if you do a little math with that, that is, uh, you know, a thousand watts divided by 225 watts per mile is 4.4 miles per kilowatt. So that, you know, that can give you a little bit more realistic information of what you're doing. So, so if you look on your, uh, electric bill, it'll tell you how many kilowatts your house uses, uh, and what you pay for it. Uh, it, it, my uh, my uh, electric uh, charging is about uh, nine cents a kilowatt, and there's taxes on there too. So I, I kind of round it to about ten cents a kilowatt. Um, so uh, if you take 125,000 miles and say that I'm going to get 4.44 miles for every kilowatt that I drive, um, that would come out to about 28,153 kilowatts. And then if you multiply that by ten cents per kilowatt you would get about $2,815 uh, for what it costs to charge the car, what it costs me to charge the car in 125,000 miles. Now, of course, there's gonna be some times, you know, when I do some uh, long range trips and I use a supercharger, you know, that's gonna cost more, of course, because, you know, you, you, you're paying for the extra convenience and the fast charging and, and that's good. Uh, but there's also times, you know, you can charge for free. I, I go in town and, plug in and have some dinner or something like that. Uh, so, you know, I kind of figure that all kind of evens out and I just kind of go by the, the home charging price. Uh, I think that's a pretty accurate picture of what, you know, if somebody bought one of these, what they might, might uh, be charged. So yeah, I was trying to, you know, just con compare this to a gas car. Um, you know, ideally, of course, this is a high performance all wheel drive car. So, you know, I, would be only fair to compare it to a similar type of car. And I'm not sure what type of gas mileage one of those gets. I'm not really up on it, but, but I figured, uh, you know, I'd just throw out 30 miles per gallon. Um, I'll do the, show the formulas here and, you know, you can, you can change that number to whatever car you have or whatever car you want to compare it to. But if you do a little quick math, 125,000 miles at 30 miles per gallon would be about 4,167 gallons of gas uh, if you had a gas car. And then, you know, of course, the price per gallon is going to vary as, as well. But uh, I'm just going to throw out there $3.50 a gallon. Uh, you know, you can, you know, raise that up or lower it down depending on what you think your gas prices average would be. Uh, so that would be $14,583 for what that might cost in a gas car. So the savings. Uh, for this, these circumstances and these numbers would be the 14,500 minus the 2,800. And so, and that comes to about $11,768 is kind of what I figured I, I saved um, compared to a gas car. So that's, that's pretty significant, uh, pretty significant savings over the years that I've had it. Um, again, you can change the numbers for your circumstances and maybe you can get an idea too if you're interested in that. Another thing I thought I would uh, bring up and mention is actually a while back I, I was in a group um, on Facebook and I just kind of threw out a little polling question out there. I said, um, if you had 
uh, is you bought a brand new car and you just drove, decided to drive it until it drops. Um, and I know some people don't do that. Some people keep them for a year or two or three, maybe even do a lease, and then they like to have a new one, and that's great. Um, I'm figuring that most people watching this video are probably not like that uh, if you're watching a 125,000 mile Tesla video. Uh, but um, if, if, you know, the, if a person wanted to keep a car for as long as, until it would, wouldn't even move anymore, how many miles would that car have to have before, after it died, you thought, okay, I think I got my money's worth out of it. I'm, I'm satisfied uh, with the life of that car. And I gave people, you know, several options, all the way from 100,000 miles up to 400,000 miles. And uh, I had 20 people respond, and most of these people, they were male and female, probably median age, about 40 years old or so. And, uh, and they actually uh, picked most of the people kind of settled in around 200,000 miles. Now, there were some that picked more and some that picked less. Uh, there was a couple people that said 150,000 miles, which, you know, if I was going to go by that, I'm pretty close to the end on this. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll, it'll make more than that. I would be very disappointed if that's all it made. But I thought it was interesting that most people pick the 200,000 miles. Uh, for myself, I think, you know, if I was buying a new car, I think that would be a pretty good uh, place that I would say 200,000 miles, I would expect it to last. Now, of course, I would hope for more, you know, with this car, I certainly hope for more. I expect 200,000 miles and, and hope for significantly more than that. Um, our Prius got more than that. Um, you know, I think, I think most modern cars do pretty well these days, as long as you don't get a dud. I know, you know, when I was young, if you had a car that got 100,000 miles, that was a lot. Uh, if you wanted one that got significantly more than that, I think, you know, you almost had to go with a, a foreign car then, like a Japanese, and Americans didn't do as well back then, but I think they're, they're doing a lot better now. So I just thought that was an interesting uh, thing that, uh, you know, to, to bring up is, you know, people's expectations of how long cars will last. So, uh, again, Elon Musk said that, uh, you know, this car should get 300 to 450,000 miles on the battery, and the life of the body of the car is a commercial grade, and he said that it really should last a million miles. So, uh, so I'm hoping to get, you know, a lot of miles on it, and then, you know, maybe even if the car is still in good shape, if the battery's no good anymore, maybe I'll replace the battery and drive it another, you know, 400,000 miles or so. So, but we'll see how that goes. I have had uh, a couple of uh, maintenance things pop up on the car. Um, you know, I, I charge this car at home, you know, at home, I've got a Tesla uh, charging uh, station in my garage and uh, it charges at 48 amps. So, you know, uh, you know, that's, that's how I charge most of the time. And that's how most people would charge. I, I noticed, you know, but most of the time I don't even really charge at 48 amps. I figure that it's better for the battery to charge at a lower rate. So a lot of times I would just charge at 24 amps or so. So only occasionally would I bump it up if I wanted to get a little bit faster rate for whatever reason. But one time I had bumped it up uh, and I noticed that it was knocking down to 32 amps and uh, it said that I should check my uh, wiring of my charger. So, you know, this was a little concerning. So, you know, I kind of did a little research and, and plugged another Tesla into the charger and that worked fine. So I determined that there was, you know, something wrong with the car. Um, that was causing it to not charge at full capacity. So I, uh, yeah, I had put a, a, a thing in the uh, app uh, for, for maintenance for, uh, for Tesla, and they contacted me, and, and after doing some, uh, some research and stuff, they had determined that uh, one of my inverters was out in the car. So, so when you plug this, the car into a uh, wall outlet at your home, whether it be a 120, volt uh, little outlet that you plug a hairdryer into or the big Tesla one, that is AC power. Now the battery is DC power. So when you plug that into the car, it has to convert from AC to DC. Um, so what this uh, car does is it's got three inverters in it. This is what I've learned. And uh, each inverter is 16 amps. So what happened with the car is one of the inverters went out. Uh, so instead of charging using all three inverters at 48 amps, it only uses two inverters at 32 amps. So, you know, of course, not, and actually I said, okay, well, what, what would this cost to fix? And I was very, kind of dismayed to hear that 
they said it was going to cost about $1,600 to, to replace them. So apparently those inverters are in the battery pack itself and they replace all of them at once. They don't just replace one of them. So that's, that's $1,600 for the uh, three inverters and to have them put in. So I was a little dismayed at this at first and it's like I've never spent $1,600 on a car uh, that I've had before. Uh, although I have, you know, I had a Toyota pickup truck that was really, really good truck, but it had a manual transmission and, and that transmission had problems and I spent almost $1,000 on that to fix the transmission three times. You know, I couldn't get a lifetime warranty like you could on an automatic transmission back then because it was a manual transmission. So I spent quite a bit of money on that, which, uh, you know, is just one of those things. I don't know if it was, you know, just something with that particular car or, uh, you know, all the cars, you know, that one was a 91 Toyota uh, 4x4 pickup. Uh, so, and that was back in the 90s. So actually, you know, $1,000 now to fix that now is quite a bit more now. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it still was, seemed like a lot of money, $1,600. So after I was talking uh, with the guy for a while, I, I kind of asked, it's like, well, do I even need to fix this? Um, you know, charging at 48 amps is great, but you really don't need to do that. Uh, even if you drive the car around all day and, and you get it really low on charge, you know, at, at uh, 42 miles per hour is what that charges at. I mean, you can charge the whole battery way more than the whole battery on an overnight charge. So usually 24 amps or 32 or less than that is really fine. Uh, so after chatting with him for a while, it, it didn't really sound like it would hurt anything just to leave it be and, uh, and not fix it. Um, and, you know, anywhere else I charge, uh, like if I go into town and grab a bite to eat and I charge in there, they're, they're pretty much limited to 32 amps anyway. So it doesn't even really hurt me there. And it doesn't really hurt me that much at home. Um, and incidentally, when you go uh, to a supercharger, um, it does not use those inverters at all because on the supercharger, that is pumping DC current directly into your car. So it does not affect supercharging at all. So... Uh, Anytime you have a car, you know, for a long time, I don't care what car you have, you're always going to have some, you know, there's things, scheduled maintenance that you're going to have to do, and then there's going to be some things pop up that are a little unusual. And you have to be uh, just cognizant of, of what those are and really uh, think about, you know, your options and uh, make a good decision. So my decision here was not to do anything, and, uh, and I'm pretty happy with that. It's still charging fine. It's doing fine and uh, I'm pretty happy with that decision. I think one thing you have to keep in mind when you're considering some of these expenses is you got to keep the big picture in mind. If you uh, think about the numbers that I went over before of the savings uh, of using electricity over gas, you know, that was $11,000, well over $11,000 in savings. So, you know, if I was to spend $1,600 on the car, uh, you know, that's still over $10,000 that's been saved in gas. So I think it's important to keep that in mind that uh, you can afford to spend a little bit on the car and uh, you still come out all right uh, just because of the economics of it. So, uh, you know, you don't want to think, oh, I don't want to do that because, you know, I'm not used to spending that much money. Well, you're saving a lot of money too. So I think it's just important to keep all that in mind uh, when you're considering some of these expenses that may or may not come up. At 120,000 miles, I did get a message saying that the small 12 volt battery needed to be replaced. Uh, so I went into the Tesla app and scheduled some service and uh, had that replaced, uh, cost about $114. Now, another thing that I had, uh, I had mentioned in the previous video is I had some squeaking in the steering and uh, it would just happen every once in a while, you know, when you hit a bump or whatever. And I brought it into the Tesla dealership and they, uh, you know, they couldn't replicate it. So I just drove it. Well, at about 108,000 miles, it was getting really bad and it was really squeaking. And I thought, okay, well, I'll bring it in now. And uh, so I brought it in. Uh, I, I put, you know, a, a request in the app, did something for the schedule. And uh, they estimated that, uh, okay, it's probably these particular things and it's gonna cost $190 to fix it. I thought, okay, well, that sounds good. So I brought it in and, you know, it had 108,000 miles on it, which is, you know, a pretty good amount of miles. And, you know, my attitude when I went in was, okay, I'm going to keep this car for a long time. And if I need to spend a little money, you know, some money on it, I will. 
Um, so that was kind of my attitude going in. And I brought it in there and they you know, brought it back and put it up on the rack and they said, oh well, you know, really it, it needs that, but it needs you know, this, this, and this. And, and uh, do you want to see uh, what we're talking about? Sure. So I went back there and you know, they had the wheels off and they said, I think I saw a little tear in one of the boots of the joints and they said, you know, this, this, and this. And I really didn't pay that much attention, I guess. I just, you know, said uh, to go ahead and do it. They, they said it was going to cost $1,300, which, you know, I guess they changed a lot of stuff on there. Um, I regret, you know, having them do that really. I think it would have been a lot smarter thinking about it later just to say, no, just fix the couple things that you were going to fix for the $190 and then let's just see how it does. But regardless, I, I told them to go ahead and fix it. And uh, I think if I, if I went back, I would make a di different decision. So, you know, we make the best decisions we can at the time. Good news is that it is fixed. Uh, I'm planning on putting a lot of miles on it. So hopefully that'll last a long time, won't be an issue again. When I uh, brought that in for uh, the, having the front end work done, I also, you know, just did some regular maintenance as well. I, I had the cabin air filter changed uh, on that. And uh, I think that's $35 for the uh, filters, and uh, they charge $70 uh, total to put it in. So I just went ahead and had them do that while it was in there. Uh, so I didn't have to like lay on my back and get up in there and try and change it. So, uh, so that's another thing that I did. I have not changed the windshield wipers yet. Um, I really haven't even put windshield wiper fluid in there. Um, I don't really use it that much. I uh, probably need to buy some and do that, but I, I really haven't done a whole lot of maintenance to it. It's been, you know, really solid, good car, uh, drives well, as you can see, it, it still looks good. Um, I am still on the second set of tires at 125,000 miles, so they are wearing well. I uh, believe I'll get at least 130,000 miles uh, before I need to change those, but um, it won't be too long. I did have a screw get in one of the tires. I uh, got a leak in it, so, uh, but I actually have some plugs. I fixed that myself. Uh, you just uh, ram a, something in there to, you know, pull the, pull the screw out, ram something in there to gouge it out, and, uh, and then shove the plug up in there and cut it off, and it seems to be holding fine. And, uh, you know, it won't be too lo much longer before I replace the tire anyway. It was really difficult to do that. It took all my strength to kind of, you know, get that thing up in there. I think that uh, these tires have foam uh, above the tread glued in there to, to reduce the noise. So I think that probably made it a little more difficult. Uh, so if you don't have good strength, don't try it yourself. I had a request for a complete maintenance log a while back, and I thought that was a fair request. Um, so I thought I'd put it up here. Um, I believe I have, you know, talked about most of this stuff um, in this log between the last video and this one. Although uh, looking at it, uh, it does uh, bring up the fact that I did do tire rotations myself uh, on the first set of tires. Uh, the second set, uh, you know, I got that from Sam's Club and they did the tire rotations for free. Uh, but since I did them at home myself uh, for the first set, um, uh, I just wanted to note that in case somebody else uh, wanted uh, to take that in, that would be an additional expense uh, to have those tire rotations done on the first set. But the car is still doing well other than that, it still drives nice. Still love it. Uh, you know, they've had a few software updates here and there, uh, you know, adding some things. Uh, but it's a lot more stable now uh, than it was. You know, they were to add, you know, when I first got the car, they were to add features to it all the time. Uh, not as much anymore, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's got everything it needs. I'm very happy with it. And I uh, hope to get another, you know, 125,000 miles or 300,000 miles or whatever out of it. And uh, I'll keep you posted.